Hey everyone, Tony from TN3 Studio and welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be showing you how to create an infinity mirror in V-Ray 5 for SketchUp. So before we get started, let's look at how an infinity mirror works. First you have your regular mirror, then you have your LED light strips. This could be a very simple shape or it could be something decorative. And then you have your two-way mirror. This is a glass that is reflective on one side and is clear on the other. So let's start by modeling our infinity mirror, which is made up of very simple geometric shapes, but it has to make sense so that things become easier when we render in V-Ray. So this could be any shape and size. So let's start with a rectangle shape. We can make it six and a half by three and a half feet. and extrude it to two inches for the thickness. Let's make this a group and this object is going to become our basic mirror. Next, we're going to copy one of these faces, paste in place and move it away by six inches. You want to make sure that the front face of this plane is facing the mirror and the back side is facing the camera. So you can right click and select reverse face if you need to. Again, select and group this object and this is going to become our two-way mirror. Now the six inches between the two mirrors is very important because here is where we're going to set our LED lights. So let's copy this shape and let's move it three inches in so that it's centered between the two mirrors. Again, we're going to keep this basic Let's offset this by two inches so it's a bit smaller. And maybe we can round the corners with the arch tool. Once you round one of the corners, double click to repeat the same command to the other corners. Again, offset for thickness. Extrude the face by one inch. And now you have this very simple shape where we're going to place our LED lights. As for the light, this is going to be a very simple shape. I'm thinking of using the V-Ray mesh lights and I'm going to use the copy along path to array this object along this curve. So let's make a component between this curve and this object. And now we can copy this component, rotate it 90 degrees, the plugin seems to work better this way, but regardless, whatever changes I make to one of these instances will reflect on all the others. So let's select our curve, activate copy path from your extensions, and let's select our LED light component. As you can see, the object is perfectly arrayed around the curve and now we can pick a distance between the objects. So let's set this to about 3.5 inches. So this is looking about right. So now that we have our LED lights arrayed within this curve, we can go back to our model and they look a bit off to the left. So let's make sure this is centered between our objects. As for the model, this is everything that we need. Everything else is just extra. I went ahead and gave the mirror a frame. So just a very simple shape with the follow me tool. And initially I wanted to make this a floor mirror, which is why it's so large but I might reduce it in size because of the scenario that I'm thinking of. 
So I went ahead and put our mirror in situ. I added in some 3D assets and materials from Chaos Cosmos so we can have a more realistic result. So now let's move on to our V-Ray materials. The first material we're going to set is going to be a basic mirror. So create a generic material, rename the material, apply it to your mirror object, and move on to the settings. As for the diffuse, you can leave it as is, but out of habit, I like to set this to black. Moving on to the reflection settings, you want to set the reflection color to white to activate the reflections and the specular highlights of the material. You also want to keep Fresnels checked, enable the IOR value, and set this to 20. These are the most optimal setting for realistic mirror material, which is going to give us the most realistic results. But we're going to come back to adjust a few more settings before our final render. So now we need to compose the material for our two-way mirror. And like I mentioned before, it needs to be reflective on one side and completely transparent on the other side. So for this, we're going to use a V-Ray two-sided material. So you want to rename this and give it a proper name. And as you can see, this is a very simple material composition. The front and back material correspond to the sketch of front and back face. As for the front material, we need to set this to the mirror material we already set before. So let's click here and select the normal mirror from our selection. And for the back material, it needs to be completely invisible or we can set it as a basic glass material so that it reflects a bit of its surrounding. So let's create another generic material and give it basic glass settings. You want to set the diffuse to black, set the reflection color to white and leave the rest of the settings as they are. As for the refractions, you want to set the refraction color to white and leave the rest of the settings as they are. And now that we have our basic glass, we're going to select this as our back material. The last setting you want to consider is the transparency setting. This controls which material is more visible relative to the camera. And since we have our back material facing the camera, the closer this value is to black, the more we're going to see our glass material. But for this example, I'll adjust this parameter closer to black. And that's about all we need to do for our two-sided material. Now that we have everything set, we can apply this to our two-way mirror object. All we need to do now is to turn on the lights between the mirrors and we should be able to see our infinity mirror effect. So let's turn on real-time render. Lock the view in place. Let's find our LED lights component. And let's click here to convert them into mesh lights. And as expected, our two-sided material is capturing the reflection between the mirrors with the lights in between. And from our perspective, we see the infinite mirror effect. Before we continue with the next few steps, we want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning, wants to explore their creativity, and learn a new skill. One of my goals this year is to improve my YouTube channel. And one of the classes I'm always revisiting is YouTube Success Script, Shoot, and Edit with MKBHD. As you know, Marquez is a very successful YouTuber, and in this class he takes you through his creative process, learning how to come up with ideas, writing your script, shooting your videos, and eventually growing your YouTube channel. If your focus is to improve your V-Ray skills, you might want to check this V-Ray 5 for SketchUp Masterclass by Manish Paul Simmons. In this class, you will learn everything there is to know about V-Ray, how to create interior renders, create V-Ray material, 
use V-Ray elements, and how to create realistic lighting. So if you're serious about achieving your goals this year, Skillshare is a great way to invest in yourself and in your personal growth. Skillshare classes are ad free so you can stay in the zone. There are new premium classes launch each week so you will always have something new to discover. And their entire catalog is now available with subtitles in Spanish, French, Portuguese and German. The first thousand people to click the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start the year right and earn those new skills. So we want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. So our mirror material has one job and that is to reflect and reflect as much as it needs to. But looking at our rendering results, it's obvious that this is not an infinite effect because the light only reflects about five times. So we need to adjust this one last setting to get this right. So let's go into our mirror material and expand the reflection settings. And here we're going to switch to advanced settings. And if you look through the settings, we're going to find a setting called max depth. This setting controls the number of times a ray is reflected on our material and the default value is about 5, which is the same amount of time we've seen our lights reflected in the mirrors. So to solve that problem, I'm going to increase this value as much as I need to so that our lights look like they reflect till infinity. Now that our mirror is looking right, we can change the colors of the LED lights if we wanted to. So go into your asset editor, find your mesh light, and you can change the color, intensity, and the units by adjusting these settings. Now let's suppose you wanted the light to transition from one color to another or between different colors. You can do this by simply adding a gradient texture into your mesh light. So you want to click on the texture slot and select the gradient texture. And I'm going to select a few different colors for this example. Now if you look at the rendering results, you can see that doing this alone doesn't give us the result that we want because our object is missing texture coordinates. So the gradient texture has nothing to map into. Enable for this to work, we're going to create a new generic material for that purpose. So apply the material to your object. We want to turn on the binding options and we're going to change the mode from auto to texture helper. And once that is done, select the entire object and we're going to use one of the V-Ray's utility options to properly map this across the entire object. And that will do it, these are very easy steps to follow and you should be able to create an infinity mirror of your own. So if you get around creating one for yourself, be sure to tag me at TN3DStudio on Instagram and let me know that the content was helpful. And I have a question for everyone, what other creative ideas would you like me to try on the channel? Be sure to leave a comment down below and don't forget to like, share the video and check us out on other social media platforms. As always, I will see you guys next time.